Hi, I'm Kurt Gensheimer with CarReview.com, and this is the 2008 Volkswagen R32. This is VW's flagship hot hatch, and it offers the practicality of a rabbit hatchback with the performance of an all-wheel drive 3.2 liter V6 in the TT. So let's take a closer look at the performance of this great car. Now because the R32 is Volkswagen's all-wheel drive Uber Coupe, it has to compete against cars like the Evo and the STI. Now the R32 is not like those cars. It doesn't have the blistering acceleration that either the STI or the Evo have. It's almost a half second slower, zero to 60. But what the R32 does have that those cars lack is a level of refinement and maturity. On the interior, it's very luxurious. You feel like you're driving a luxury sedan, supple leather. It has a very quiet highway presence, and the suspension is very supple. It doesn't beat you up like the other cars do. And that's why the R32 is a great competitor to those cars, because it competes in a different area. The powertrain of the R32 is much like the Audi TT. It features a 3.2 liter normally aspirated VR6, good for 250 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. And it also features VW's version of Quattro, which is called Form Motion. It's a Haldex-based all-wheel drive system. Now, because of the all-wheel drive system and the VR6 engine, the R32 isn't light by any stretch of the imagination. It comes in at over 3,500 pounds, but the increased spring rates that Volkswagen engineers have put on this vehicle really mask the weight well. One of the great parts of the R32 is the 3.2 liter VR6. It's normally aspirated. And what we love about this engine, it has such a linear power band. All the torque, the 236 pound-feet of torque is available right around 2800 RPM. So this car has grunt and the day is long. One of the other great features of the DSG combined with the 4Motion system is launch control. So when you mash your foot to the floor from a dead stop, all four tires don't smoke into oblivion. The R32 sprints to 60 miles an hour in just about five and a half seconds. And in the quarter mile, it comes in around 14 and a half seconds at 96 miles an hour. That's definitely a little bit slower than competitors like the Evo and the STI. Precision is the name of the R32's game. It cuts like a scalpel in corners, it's extremely precise turn-in, and on the highway it has a very reassuring feel. This car is designed for the Autobahn, over 100 miles an hour. It's quiet and serene, the road noise is muted, it's definitely a high-speed car. Now in North America, the R32 comes equipped with only the DSG transmission. You can't get it in a six-speed. The DSG is nice, it shifts amazingly well. I mean, it's definitely the best manual automatic gearbox that we've ever experienced. But it has a little bit of temperamental behavior. The sport mode, you, you can go in regular drive, you can go in, of course, the manual mode or the sport mode. Now the sport mode is uh, like a hybrid. It, it, it automatically shifts for you and lets you shift at the same time. It can be very temperamental. You're driving down the road, you don't really want to accelerate, but then all of a sudden, the transmission downshifts two clicks. It can get quite annoying. The R32 features one of the greatest exhaust notes we've heard in any hot hatch. Listen to this thing. <laughs> On the outside, the R32 has very sedate looks. It's mature. There are no obnoxious wings or hood scoops. It's got some great tailpipes. We love the center exit tailpipes. We love the front of the R32, but for some reason, the back of the R32 we have a hard time warming up to. Now, unlike other hot hatches, which have an interior that's one step away from rental car banality, the R32 features a well-equipped interior. Look at the steering wheel. It's got the flat bottom, just like an F1 car. It's got these contoured hand grips. It, this is one of our favorite steering wheels we've ever put our hands on. It also features standard options. The standard options are climate control and a 10-speaker audio system, heated seats, rain sensing wipers, it's got a long list. The R32 also features essential options like navigation and a really nice integration for your iPod. Now if you can find one for sale on the open market, the Mark IV R32 commanded a premium price. And the reason why they command such a premium price is because they only made 5,000 of them and they represented a big improvement over the stock GTI. But with the Mark V platform, there's a big difference. The new GTI for 2007 and a half, 2008, is a much improved car. 
And the question now is, do you go with the R32 or do you go with the GTI and save thousands of dollars? Here we have the R32 and the GTI. This is a four-door GTI. It's fully optioned. It's got every option you can imagine. And it comes in at $33,000. The R32 here is equipped base at $33,000 and as tested, $35,000. So you can get a loaded GTI four-door or you can get a base R32 for the same price. But what are the differences between the two? Not only performance, we know that the R32 is all wheel drive versus front wheel drive. And we know that the R32 has the 3.2 liter V6 versus the two liter turbo four cylinder. But what other things are different between these two cars? The difference in a word or two words, not much. You can see the front fascia, a little bit different and it has bigger brakes, but that's only because the R32 is 300 pounds heavier than the GTI. The two most obvious exterior differences is that on the GTI you've got these flying scimitar of death rims versus the more traditional spoked rims on the R32. And also of course the other big difference is the exhaust. We've got the side exhaust whereas on the R32 it's a center exhaust. Of course with its four motion the R32 has much more lateral grip in corners and can deliver power in a more efficient manner than the GTI, especially considering if you chip the GTI. Yeah, if you throw a couple hundred dollars into the GTI, you chip it, you're going to get more power and it will out accelerate the R32, but you're going to be laying rubber all over the place. Now we know that the exhaust exit point on the back are different between the R32 and the GTI, but how about the sound? Well, this is the sound of the GTI. Performance wise, there's very little difference. I mean, we're talking tenths of a second in the zero to 60, 5.5 versus 5.9, and a 14.7 quarter mile versus a 14.5, it's negligible. Unless you're on a track trying to turn hot laps, you're really not gonna notice that much of a difference. But where you will notice a difference is in power delivery. The GTI is a four cylinder turbo, so it's got a little bit of lag followed by a rush of boost, whereas the R32 is consistent linear power. They both get you to the same place in about the same amount of time, but they get you there very differently. And on the fuel economy front, the GTI is gonna get on average five miles per gallon on the highway and in the city better than the R32. And from the inside, the GTI and R32 are virtually identical. If you option them the same, you get the same great steering wheel, the same soft supple leather, and the same 10 speaker audio system, and the same DSG. But let's get down to the nitty gritty, AKA dollars. The R32 base price is for $33,000. Now, uh, GTI with the DSG transmission, base price is at $24,000. That's $9,000 less. But this one we have here is fully optioned. It's got the full boat Comstock loaded, and it comes in at thirty-three dollars pretty much the same price as the base R32, which has all the options standard. So what you got to ask yourself is, what kind of climate do you live in? Do you need an all-wheel drive car? And then the other question you got to ask yourself is, would you rather have the linear power band of the 3.2 V6 or the boosting, whining sound of that great 2-liter turbo? It's up to you because the price is pretty similar for the options. Just like the fourth generation R32, Volkswagen's only making 5,000 of these cars. But unlike the last generation, already they're not selling as well and probably won't hold their value as well as the Mark IV R32. It's a testament to how much the GTI has improved. However, we can't deny the fact that the R32 has one of the sweetest exhaust notes we've ever heard. We love the linear power band of the VR6 and all-wheel drive is welcome in those wet, rainy days.